And we are live. It's a Sunday night. I want to thank everyone for uh, tuning in. It seems to be really, really busy. Uh, Chad and Sarah are still live at the moment over at uh, It's Bourbon Night. And uh, Scott and Bart are doing a Patreon live. I think right around the same time. So if you're one of the Patreons, probably not tuning in. Uh, Maverick88, thank you for tuning in. Wheels, how you doing, man? Thank you for tuning in. And Adam B. So hopefully some people will be tuning in in just a minute. And if you're watching this on the replay, uh, I've been doing a series on blind tasting whiskey. Um, and I'm going to continue on later uh, Later on. Jimmy Jazz, thank you much for tuning in. Mike Meyer, thank you much for tuning in. Brew Tone, thank you very much for tuning in. So I've been doing a series on blind tasting whiskey, but I come to sort of a, a topic within blind tasting. Chris McClure, thank you much for tuning in. Richard, my man, how you doing? Um, which is the str- analyzing the structure of whiskeys. Um, analyze, and, and I'm taking a lot from my studies with the Court of Master Sommeliers, studying with Master Sommeliers, and bringing some of those skills over into the whiskey world, but it, it's not an exact, you can't do just a cut and paste from one to the next. And one of the main issues that is really does not match up is analyzing structure of whiskeys. In uh, wines, it's acid, tannin, um, alcohol, body, length. So acidity and tannins, yeah, you can get some wood tannins from bourbons and so forth, but it's not a major issue. Anyway, it didn't, so I'm still working on it. And there's no books, there's no articles. I can't find anything from the uh, whiskey world uh, written on this topic because blind tasting and analyzing whiskeys in this fashion just isn't, hasn't been a part of the whiskey world. So anyway, so uh, what I've got going on tonight, I have four bourbons. And on the bottom of each bourbon is a label, on each bottle is a label, and the bottom of each one of these uh, Glen Cairns is a sticker, so I colored stickers. On each, each one of these, there's a colored sticker on each one of those, and my brother has uh, moved them around, so I don't know which one's which. So I'm not gonna try to blind taste and tell you, oh, okay, I think this one's a Blount, one, this one's a Buffalo Trace, this one's a Wellers, this one's Elijah Craig. But it just turns of what do I think is the best? And then we'll compare prices. We're gonna look more at prices <coughs> than we are in terms of trying to guess or de- determine or deduce which one's which. Whiskey Hunter, thank you much for tuning in. Uh, Joseph Horton, thank you very much for tuning in. By the way, Scully, Scully's House of Thrillers, how you doing? Tur- thank you for tuning in. Joe. Bimbo, thank you much for tuning in. By the way, hold on. If y'all are interested, I put in the in the uh, announce in the community section of uh, my channel. If you're interested in getting one of my coins, my yeah, one of my coins. If you if you're interested in one of my coins, one of my coins. So twenty bucks, including shipping. That should cover the cost of the coin and shipping. I'm not making any money off of these. Um, to Eric Way at Yahoo, send it to PayPal. Anyway, so. You can, you can find that information in the community section or on uh, uh, my Facebook group. Anyway, I had 300 of these made. There's already 50 of them gone. I will mail these out in probably at least groups of 10 because I don't want to go to the post office every day. Uh, but anyway, so if you're interested, uh, I've been sitting on these for a while. Uh, let me know. $20 each. If you order two of them, that's $40. I'll send them in one envelope. I'll, but it's 40 bucks. All right, enough of that. Uh, I'm gonna, I need to increase the size of the chat. Sorry, I'm gonna, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna increase the size of the chat so I can see it's better. There we go. Oh, oh that's better. Hold on, should have done that earlier. So I can read that. Da, 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 da. Co and thank you much for tuning in. Whiskey Frontier, AJ Lopez. All righty, so um. I sent links to a couple bourbon people. We'll see if they turn in or tune in or not. They might just pop in. Don't know. I sent to Bourbon Insane, sent to Jason. They might be working. They might be busy. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. So I did an inventory of my whiskeys here. I've got exactly 200 bottles. 61% of my bottles are scotch. Um, hold on. I'm going to look up the stats real quick. Mm. Uh, there we go. Okay, out of the 200 bottles, I have 49 bottles of bourbon, 123 bottles of scotch, 
13 Irish, and those Irish are new. Uh, I'm going to be doing a whole series on Irish whiskeys. It'll take me about two months, so I've been doing a whole series on uh, on Irish. Six Japanese, two Australian, two Canadian, and four of others, with a total of 200 bottles. All right. So reason why I mentioned that is, so what percentage of my collection is bourbon? What percentage is uh, scotch? About 24% or actually 24 point whatever. It's called 25. It's like 24.8 or something like that percent is bourbon. So I'm much more of a Scotch guy than a bourbon guy. I have much more of my fingers on the pulse of what's going on in the Scotch world and Texas uh, than I do on the, in the bourbon world. So summertime, though, I like to have a bourbon. I like to have a bourbon um, on the rocks. As you know, I just recently did a video called, you know, I've got balls <laughs> in which I was drinking some Eleanor uh, 9.6 on on ice, on, on bourbon balls. Um, so I spend actually mostly, I like peated whiskeys in, in cold weather. I like scotch, so scotch. And I tend to actually get more into bourbons during the summertime because I like to put them on ice. That's the way I like to drink them. So I don't keep up to date on the latest thing that's going on in the bourbon world. Whereas Jason or uh, the Mash and Drum or Chris or Bourbon Insane or Chad and Sarah, they, they might have much more, a better idea of what's going on currently in, in the bourbon world. So when I was looking at these whiskeys, and I've got a, this is the, this is the Blantons. You know, you could notice this from a thousand miles away. If it shows up in a movie, if, if you're watching a movie and this is sitting on a shelf way in the back somewhere in the scene, you immediately recognize it, right? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a classic image. You know, it's they, some people call it the holy hand grenade, whatever. And they got the, you know, you got the little toppers, the different uh, toppers for it. You can collect all of them or whatever. Um, so I bought this a few years ago for $65 here in the United States. You could walk into any Bedmo, you could walk into any Total Wine and More, you could walk into any whiskey shop, and they were readily available. Hey, whiskey straight out. Thank you much for uh, tuning in. Um, like the Willet Pot still on the top shelf. Uh, so I've got a bunch of other bourbons on. I just grabbed these ones because uh, they're different quality levels, probably, and different price levels. So I was like, okay, how much is this? I know there's been a lot of chatter about the Blantons. So I was like, okay, how much? I paid, I paid 165 went online, and bam, $200. I'm like, holy cow. And so I put that on the thumbnail, but you're $200. Not only is it $200, you can't even, it's not like $200 you can walk and there's one right there. You can't even freaking get them even at $200. They're really, really hard to get. Now, I'm not complaining. I don't believe in government control and, you know, uh, supply and demand and people are going to pay for what they're going to pay for and, if, and all that. So I, I don't have any complaints about that. But qualitatively... Unless you just want a fancy bottle to put on your shelf, is it really, really worth it? That's really what I want to get at. But I have questions. What is driving up the bourbon prices? And I don't, I don't have any good stats on it because I'm not following it. Um, just checking for any other comments. Uh, oh, AJ says, "Well, hell nah for two hundred. Yeah, that's an, it's kind of nuts though. You know, even if I want a really, really, really good bourbon that I know I'm gonna love." There are a whole lot of others I'll, I'll, I'll go and grab. Uh, let me see if there's any other comments. All right. So if you'd have yourself some bourbon, pour yourself one. And uh, we're going to get into this in the meantime. Uh, do, 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 do. I, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do my intro, my, my rock and roll intro. So what the hell? Let's get into it. Um, Wrong one. That's not the intro. That's the outro. <laughs> anyway, I haven't been going live in a while. <laughs> there you go. Uh, whiskey, uh, whiskey Straight Out says, Blends, particularly uh, the gold, is reasonably easy to source in the UK. Uh, it's not easy, uh, but you can still uh, source from the year for a, a lot. Okay, but whiskey out straight out. How much? How much? How much? Alrighty. 
So this week has been really, really screw screwy. Normally, I would have gone live yesterday, uh, but mentally I wasn't in the mood. Yesterday would have been my oldest brother's 63rd birthday, and I was just saying this mental funk all day. Uh, but to make it even worse, so I went shopping yesterday to get myself in a good mood and bought 13 bottles of Irish whiskey. And I'm going to move these over to a little, a little bit. And so I was, I was setting, I was, you know, rearranging shelves and putting all the Irish whiskeys. I got 13 of them over here. And I don't know, an hour or so after I put them on the shelves, all of a sudden I heard this crash. And one of the shelves, I guess the pin had popped out and it dipped. And all these bottles went crashing uh, to the ground. But only one bottle broke, which could have been worse. But of all the bottles that broke, the one that broke was a Glendola 13-year-old uh, Mizanura cask, which is like about 125 bucks. All and I got a or I went and ordered another one already, but there goes 125 bucks. And of all the ones that, that broke, the rest of them are sort of standard bottles you can get anywhere. Anyway, so yesterday I was just not in the mood, but today is Sunday. All right, we're gonna get into this. I'm doing about ice. So I don't know which one's which. Color wise, can you tell the difference in the color wise? Um, Mr. Hudu says I'd rather buy five bottles of true blue corn whiskey. Then one 200 bottle of Blanton's. I'm not a real big on the true blue. Um, uh, Whiskey Al says, Straight Al says, gold is 60 to 70 pounds. Um, the straight from the barrel is 100 pounds. All right. So this one is. Uh, da -da 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 -da. The original single barrel bourbon whiskey. This is. Uh, was dumped on. 1227-2018. This is barrel number 3106, stored in warehouse H, Rick number one, and uh, bottled at 93 proof, at 93 proof. This is your standard Buffalo Trace. You can. I'm now seeing this for under 30. These started jumping up like 45 and up, but they seem to have come back down. I think there was sort of a, at least a little time frame there where people kind of go nutsos and also, hey, Everybody's into bourbon right now. Let's go. Let's start jacking up our prices. And like Weller, uh, I think I paid 45. I think these are not now back down to close to 30. I was seeing this. This is the Weller Special Reserve. Um, I was seeing this for over $100. And then somebody got a reality check. You know, I, I don't have any problem with any business trying to make a buck. You know, uh, but, but, um, it's stupidity to think you're going to kind of screw over your, 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 your fan base, your loyal customers, and just start jacking up prices. Uh, it, you're just going to piss them off. They're going to look for something else to drink. But, you know, but I think the hype that was there for a while sort of has a readjusted and the bottle prices have gone back down, at least for some of them. Some of them. This is Elijah Craig uh, Barrel Proof uh, C917. Uh, this has been a favorite of mine, uh, probably one of the highest quality price ratio, uh, bourbons, absolutely superb. Now, because it's a higher ABV, it's probably going to stand out from the rest of these, but we'll, uh, find out. Um, oh, got 85 people in the group. Wow. That's crazy. Um, all right. So I'm going to nose. Well, visually here, I don't see any major differences. I don't see any major differences. I'll hold them up a little bit. They look like bourbons. You know, that sort of bronze, copper, golden color. Uh, this one in my left hand, slightly. This one here is slightly darker. Slightly darker. Um, one of the good things about bourbons is, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, is because they can't add E150, everything that's in there, in terms of color, is coming straight from the cask. All right, let's go do the nose. So I've been live for 15 minutes and haven't tasted taste anything. That one smells like a weeder. This one smells like it's got just a little bit of rye, just a, I mean, just a hint, hint, just a hint of rye. Ooh, this one definitely smells like a weeder. 
it's softer, it's creamier on the nose. I don't know, like creamy on the nose. How do you say creamier? It's dusty. Um, it has more of a croissant uh, aroma to it. It has a little bit more spike on the nose, though, also a little more tingle, which would be higher ABV. This one is the most mild out of all of them. By the way, just in case you're just tuning in, these do not these glasses here do not line up. I do not know what's in these. These have been um, I poured them, I labeled them on the bottom, and then my brother moved them around, so I don't know what is what. So this isn't necessarily that, and so forth. In case you're tuning in late, so talking about quality price ratios for bourbons is the, is this one bottom line? Is this one going to turn out to be the favorite one that really really stands out as being superior in quality over all these others? These are a little bit more affordable, a little bit more widely available, which is why I've got them on here. Prices can vary 30, 30, 35, $40 somewhere in that range. Line Craig barrel proof, obviously a little more alcohol, so it'll probably stand out. Uh, 70 to $80 here. Of course, it's, you know, it's a, it's a quarterly release. So you get, you gotta look, pay attention. Is it, you know, what letter is an A, B, or a C, what year it is. So that can vary because these are um, uh, from a cast. So it's going to be some variation in there. But still, quality price ratio, you're still talking under $100, right? So these are two bargains, bargains in quotation marks. These are two more affordable. This one's more expensive, but still, I think, high quality price ratio. And this one's at $200. All right. I'm going to nose him one more time. Wise guy, the whiskey guy, the Elijah Craig Bear Proof standout is a uh, is like a hooker in a church. Um, there's several different ways you could take that. Uh, is she going there in repentance? Is she going there for a pickup? Or is she just out of place because she doesn't belong there? Or if she's doing her profession, she doesn't belong there. I would say that much. Now, there's no one who doesn't belong in church. It's just whether or not you're, she's trying to do her profession. All righty. This one, a little spicier, more wood spice cinnamon. I know. it's it, to, to sit there and smell and then and not be talking at the same time. I can't talk and smell at the same time. And yet I need to keep you guys entertained as I'm going along. I mean, just the more wood spice, more cinnamon, nutmeg, um, that more baking spices. Again, this one, it's more doughy. You know, if you were to walk into a bakery, uh, I worked at a bakery at a bakery for 30, 40 years ago before I went to the Marine Corps in the 1980s. So I, I, I worked from like 2 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock in the morning working at a bakery. And so it was around bread or I'd croissants and French rolls and everything else, you know. Um, but this is a little bit more like you're walking into a bakery. There's fresh bread, um, but then add in some corn, caramels, vanilla, and, and baking spices. That leans me, and I could be completely wrong. I, I may be blowing it out of my ass on this one. <laughs> that one makes me much more towards a weeder because I'm not getting those distinctive. I mean, you know, it's just a little bit uh, that rye will just. A little bit of pop out. No, sticking my nose in like this, I stick my nose in and immediately bring it away because you can sort of like saturate your nose to where that's all you're smelling. That's, you know, you're not smelling anything else. So you have to kind of put your nose in it, break away, and then return to it. But, but give it, because after a while, they can start smelling the same because you're, it's, imagine if these are little particles and they're in your nose. And you're still smelling it. Um, and so you got to kind of let yourself cl clear out a little bit. All righty. So, hey, Richie Z, how you doing, man? So here's a question. Why the huge increase in prices in particular bourbons? Now, we all know, we all know, um, you know, the pappies. We, okay, we all know they're insanely expensive. There's a story behind it. 
And then so the mad the madness sort of kicks in. Everybody starts going uh, cra crazy over it, you know. And then the hype, and then the hard to get, right? So high demand because of the hype, and then um, you know, and then it's got the picture on it, and it's got the name, you know, and, and all that, right? It's good branding, you know. And then the scarcity, and then people are lining up to get it, and all that. And then the prices go up, and then you know all the flippers going. Okay, that's the phenomenon. And meanwhile, I've tasted every, um, basically at least once every Pappy out there. I've never bought a bottle. Uh, Yo, Jimbo. Uh, allocation. Allocation regarding to what? Yeah, the, the allocation, you know, hard, hard, difficult to get them and so forth. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah, John Wick. I And I really like the John Wick films, if you haven't seen them. Uh, the acting isn't great, but probably some of the best action, uh, you know, martial arts uh, films made. A very, very, very high, high, high action. I've watched all three of them, and there's an, eventually a fourth one will come out. Of course, this makes an appearance in there as well, and there's a very, very, very brief scene when a bottle of Ardbeg, and it's kind of hard to tell that's Ardbeg, uh, shows up as well. All right, let's get these on the palette and try them. Again, tuning in late, these glasses do not line up with the bottles. These have been, these are, I'm doing these blind. So anytime I taste something, whether it's a wine or a whiskey, I don't. The first sip is to sort of not shock your palate, like "ooh, that's shocking," but rather sort of prep the palate and not make any evaluations on it. So I tend to sip, and then sort of whatever thoughts I need to come to my head, just sort of let it go, and don't make base any judgments on it. So I'm going to quickly sip each one of these just a little bit. Drink water in between. Go back for a second time and then start talking about each and individual bourbon. Now, as I said before, as I went through my collection, I'm only about a 25% bourbon guy. I'm around a 60% scotch whiskey guy. And the rest of the percentages, the, the other 15% is made up of other whiskeys. Japanese, uh, I got a couple of Australians, New Zealand. Um, well, I got one from... Um, it was not Sweden, nor not Norway. Um, anyway, uh, and, and of course, I got some Texans and all that. All right, another sip. One of the things I'm also doing is, in terms of not in terms of the flavors and aromas, the the texture, the development, but what's the uh, mouth feel, and what's the ABV. Because I'm kind of for myself, I just am curious. Can I pick out the high ABV one? Should be easy. That's one of the easy things to do with bourbons or whiskeys in general is to be able to spot that high ABV. All right. I know I said I wouldn't evaluate it right away. This one's got more kapow than this one. On the first sip, much more more kapow. That's a, a Vulcan me meaning a lot more powerful. I made that up. Potentially a little bit of rye, but a minuscule amount, not a whole lot. It feels actually feels kind of thin. It's okay. Um, it nice, has a nice velvety texture. This one, the first one here on my left, on my left, actually has more body, more weight, and more power and more strength. This one has more elegance, more finesse, a little thinner, silkier. This one's and this one's oilier. Those are just first impressions. All right, the third one. Again, this is the one that had the most bread-like notes. You know, the croissants, that kind of character to it. I'm getting more wood spice, which is more baking spices, vanillas, cinnamon, nutmeg, you know, that kind of character. And I'm not getting any sharp spices like pepper or any of those green notes and root beer and that kind of thing that you might get from um, uh, rye. All right. Graham Young, thanks so much for tuning in. Hey, Bill. Uh, Bill, if you want, you want to come on live, you want to come on. Um, I thought he would be busy. Um, yes, 
But yes, Bill, croissant. Not, not, not croissant, not crescent, croissant. I'm going to put, Bill, I'm going to put in the link. And if you want to come in, and there we go. I'll send you the link. I'll put it in the chat just to make it easy. You might not be set up. Uh, so I can send you an email if you want as well. Thanks for the invite. My stuff isn't set up yet. Anyway, if you want to get set up or whatever, uh, let me know. I can I can send you an email as well or a text message. Da -da -da -da. I should have thought of that earlier. Uh, I'll send it to you on um, -da -bum -bum -bum, Twitter e message. Messages. Where's the... Uh, sorry. Sorry, guys. If I can find them here. There we go. Oh, oh, not that one. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm looking for just... Oh, there we go. And I'll send you the link, Bill. Hold on. On your uh, Twitter message. So if you want to pop in. But no pressure. If you're not up for it, you're not up for it. No worries. <clears throat> Richie Z, uh, nice crowd. Well over 100. Yeah, that's a first. Uh, I don't think I've ever had that many people. All right. Back to the whiskeys. Back to the bourbons. So this one is consistent with my perception of weeders. So if I was doing this, if I didn't have the bottles, I might go towards a Weller. I might think, mm, could be a Maker's. Although it doesn't have the red cherry note, uh, that sort of um, cherry cough syrup kind of character. I get a little bit of that on um, uh, on Maker's Mark, um, which I kind of like. I know Chris over Bourbon Saint doesn't like that, but I like it. All right, now the fourth one. Um, this fourth one is also softer. If it has any rye, it's minuscule. I get right kind of back here, about three quarters through the finish. Just, I mean, the most minuscule amount of rye. This one, I'm not getting any at all. Uh, this one, I'm, these two here, I'm getting probably about an equal amount of rye in terms of the perception on the palate. Just that little bit of a pepper, a little bit of, of a green note, a little bit of uh, a little of that spike, kind of that little, slight little uh, uh, spice bite. And this one on my left, the fir first one on my left, um, has the biggest roundness feel. More feels like it has more alcohol. I'm going to drink some water here. Uh, Chad and Sarah told people to check you out. Well, thank, thank you very much to Chad and Sarah. I appreciate it. Um, if they're watching, if they're not watching, so we met at the Bastards Ball last October, and I haven't published it yet. I'm going to put it out probably at the end of September. Um, I did. I recorded interviews with all the whiskey. Well, I may have missed one or two uh, whiskey tubers. I did interviews with everybody, and I haven't put it together yet. I haven't done the editing, put it together, on, but I'm going to create a whiskey tuber video. And when I was recording them and interacting with them on video and recording, I'm behind the camera. And I'm watching and there's no script. You know, I'm just asking questions and they're responding. I was like, holy cow. Um, they have a great camera video presence. Uh, and you can't fake that. I don't know if you, I don't think you can learn that. It's part of your personality. Um, they're very charming. Uh, they interact really, really well with each other really, really well. Um, and they engage with the camera really, really, really well. Uh, they're just natural, and it's, it's all very, 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 very natural. So I can see why people like them so much. They're just uh, a real, uh, uh, a really nice, charming young couple. They're not a grizzly old. Uh, uh, Chad's not a grizzly, not yet. He's not a grizzly old bearded, gray bearded man. You know, bald and all that. You know, he's he, he, with it with the gra with the gravelly voice. He hasn't gotten there yet. So, <laughs> but give him time. 20 years from now, it'll be Chad and 
here to be a whole man back in the old days. We used to do the YouTubes. Yeah. Anyway. All right. I'm a little nervous about doing this live, but doing something blind takes a, takes a little bit of guts, uh, particularly since bourbon isn't my strongest point. It, bourbon isn't my strongest point, but I'm going to quickly go through one more. Archie Tyler, thank you much for the five bucks. I uh, greatly appreciate it. Without Charles, Charles, I'm going to miss uh, going to the Bastards Ball this year. Yeah, me too. I was just down to Texas um, like last week. I was in there a couple weeks ago. I got bit, and then I got one there. I got there and there and there and there. The, the humidity is just like, ah. Uh, but the people are great. The whiskeys are great. I had a great time. I love the place there. I love the place. Uh, I love the people there. I had a really, really super, super, super awesome time there. Um, and the only thing is the weather and the bugs. Other than that, everything there was awesome. And hoping to be back down there maybe next April. Uh, be back down there again. But yeah, I miss the Bashers Ball. Um, because, I mean... We get to meet up, which I've met up with Roy a couple times before, but get to see a lot of other whiskey tubers. We got to meet Jason uh, C. Uh, finally, for, that, for the first time and face to face. Met up with Bill there again, the whiskey dick, uh, but we met up before down in San Diego. Um, anyway, and then Sammy, Sammy, Sam and Bobby, or we just call them uh, Basami. I met, met up with them there, really, really neat, neat couple, kind of crazy, just a little bit. Uh, really <laughs> down there. So yeah, I'm missing this year. I guess they're going to try to do a sort of a virtual fastest ball on YouTube and stuff. But as we know, it's not going to be the same. Um, but you got to do what you got to do. All right. Um, I'm going to guess or deduce. This is a weeder. I'm going to. I'm going to. I think this is the Weller. This is the highest ABV. It has much more of the punch. Richie Z, thank you very much uh, for the ten bucks. Or nine ninety nine because that's what's for some reason you can't put in ten dollars on a cell phone uh, chat. Uh, you can only, you have to do like nine nine cents. I don't know why. Um, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna think I think this is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I think this is the the really the weeder, uh, the Weller. Uh, I'm gonna go this one here is the Buffalo Trace. I'm gonna go this one here. I think this one is the um, Blanton's. So I'm going to go Elijah Craig, Blanton's, Weller. No, no, no. Yeah, Elijah Craig. I'm going to re I'm going to move the bottles to what I think it is. That'll make it clear in my head. So I'm going to go Blanton's. I'm going to think this is Elijah Craig. I think this is the Weller. And I think this is the Buffalo Trace. There's the labels on the bottom. We'll see how I did. Now, that's what I think they are, but that, that's not prim my primary goal here. Uh, that's not what I think uh, um, my, my primary goal. My primary goal is what did I prefer? What did I prefer? Now, I think all of these are really, 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 really good. I, I think these are really nice bourbons. Um, Sean Jones, thank you much for the 10 bucks. Help to pay for that drop bottle. You know... If it had been so, like, like I got a bottle of the regular Jamesons over it. It's like 25, 30 bucks. If it had broke that one, you know, okay, I could, I could go down to the liquor store and get another one, right? Uh, that's of all of them, that was the most expensive. Um, yeah, probably the most expensive. I have three different red breasts. I have a Conamar, I have a Dunneville's Triple Crown Peated, I have a Tomar Dew 15 year old, I have a Teeling, two different Teelings, I have the Jameson, I have a Powers, a Nepog Castle, probably pronouncing that incorrectly, and have a yellow spot 12. Uh, I will probably pick up another four or five Irish whiskeys before it. Uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the um, Glen Glendola 13 year old Mizanera cast. I already ordered one, 125 bucks with the shipping. It'll be here in, in a week. Of all the ones to break, that was the worst one to break. But, so I can be upset about that. But uh, it could have been worse. It could have been more broke, right? 
Oh, hey, the whiskey dick is coming on in. Um, so, Bill, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up. All right. So one of the questions I asked at the beginning of the live stream is why are the prices going crazy? Why is there such a shortage? And I think I have a solution. The reason why there's such a shortage and a demand for bourbons right now is one. I think the tariffs increasing the price of scotches, that could be part of it, but I think it's because of whiskey tubers. I think, the, I think it's because of whiskey tubers making bourbon more popular. So more of the bourbon emphasized or 100% bourbon whiskey tubers. And I think the number one person, it's because he has one of the largest channels, it is all Bill's fault. <laughs> Bill is the reason why he is the reason why the price going up so everybody give a thumbs down for bill <laughs> prices of bourbon i i wish i could take any of that credit honestly but <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that eric <laughs> nice to see you hey good to see you too can, can you hear me all right i can hear you fine i'm gonna um, turn yeah, your smog bomb on my end just a little bit i don't want any feedback I was uh, going to say, I got a little bit of, like, your voice kind of cut in and out when I start, uh, when I first came in. Is it okay? I, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, cool. So, uh, you got some action going on here, there, dude. I, I've been out in my uh, yard for the last two days with a chainsaw, so I had to grow a little bit of something going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be, I'll shave before my live tomorrow night. A little bit you of got, a flavor saver? Yeah. <laughs> you caught me a little off guard, so I was like, all right, well, what the hell, I'll go on, it's Eric. So what do you got poured there? Uh, well, I tried my best to match you based off what I had available. Um, I don't have anything poured yet, but I, I grabbed my ECBP. Oh, okay. Um, Which one is that one? This one's the B519. Um, okay. I almost picked up a B520 today, but the place I went to had a little higher prices than that what I was like expecting. like an Air Force jet. And a B519. I know. Is <laughs> <laughs> that like a bomber? Yeah. Um, so, yes, the B117, actually, the first first release of uh 2017 would have been fan or actually no it would never line up because it would be the a117 ah it's whatever anyway i got some blanton's gold as well because i i don't have a regular bottle of the blanton's but i'll, I'll just flex a little so bit is the gold. horse gold the horse is gold yes and what's the primary because i don't know the bourbons as well as some of y'all um and what's the main difference between the gold and, and this one i believe this one's just higher higher abv if i remember correctly okay, okay. Uh, it's been a little while since i've so how much? So this one's going for like two hundred bucks. That's how much is that one going for? You think this one? If you can even wait, the the is that the regular blends? This yeah, I think this or is the so called regular one. Not it's not the single barrel, right? It's because I get to see uh, that price from the single barrel. Yeah, it's a single barrel. Oh okay, all right. That makes it's still a stupid dumb price, but that makes more sense. If you were buying a Blanton's regular for two hundred, I was gonna be shocked. Okay, so how uh, much does the regular then go for? So the regular is like a little little north of fifty five, somewhere between fifty five and sixty five, depending on the place that you are, assuming that you could find it. Um, the Blanton's gold, I believe, is about a hundred dollars, um, but you can't buy it in the states. Um, it's only available outside. I had somebody send this to me. And then um, the single barrel that you've got there, that's that's the uh, the really like desired one. So oh, I'm not okay. surprised that it's – it's funny. I didn't notice from your thumbnail that that was the single barrel at first. Uh, so now the thumbnail makes a little bit more sense. I thought I – at first I thought you were just talking about like secondary market prices being $200 for regular Blanton's. So – Anyway, yeah. yeah, but I paid – I remember getting this at Total Wine and More. Mm -hmm. uh, probably – this is uh, – let's see. Uh, dumped on 2018, so probably 2019, maybe mm -hmm. uh, in December 2018. So maybe sometime 2019. I, I never just paid 65, I, 65 bucks for it. So uh, Brent Bailey, thanks for thanks for catching that. So I've been saying say, uh, single barrel. What I meant to say is straight from the cask, um, which is is different. Or is that that's what I believe you have there. It should say on it, I believe, right at the top, right around the so neck. So bourbon bites. No, I didn't pay two. I paid 65, but that that was a couple years ago. But once hmm. searching on the internet, because I want to get an update, I've not been keeping my, as I mentioned earlier, I don't keep my fingers on the pulse of the bourbon world. I'm, you know, only uh, 24 point whatever percent of my collection, you know, 25% hmm. is bourbon. I pay much more attention to scotch and I'm going to do like a couple months of Irish. So I'll be focusing on Irish, but I don't ah. keep up the, in the bourbon world as much as these guys who cause the prices to go up because 
their channels are so huge and so popular that every, yeah. day, every time they do something, everybody go out and buy it. And so they're the reason why, particularly Bill, he's the reason why the prices are so high. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do actually agree with you that I think the, the prevalence of bourbon drinkers on YouTube has added some uh, merit to that argument. But see, this is what I sound like when I haven't been drinking. I actually use like intelligent words. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so what whiskey too would you blame it on? Should we blame it on Jason? Well... See, that's an interesting question because because at this point, obviously, the bourbon junkies have gotten huge, and they're they're kind of bringing you know some some fun to their streams and everything like that. They're, they're and their and their channel has increased too. Yeah, their their channel has gone up like huge in the last year. It's funny their their channel was much different a year ago, and and then something changed. Their set they looks really really good. The background, the thumb, yeah, it looks a lot more with it. It's not just two guys being a, a couple years. Right. They've exactly. really gotten their act together. They've done a really really good job. Yeah, and then obviously the the whiskey vault guys, they um, you know, they've they've more just raised awareness in general that there is this niche on YouTube about whiskey. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's opened up some stuff. Obviously, um, Chad and Sarah have some impact as well. Like this, yeah. there's a lot of channels. I think pretty much any any bourbon that you want to search for, there's a good chance that a whiskey tuber has done it right. at some point. You know, even brand new releases. But so. if you look across the board, like Chris Bourbon Insane, I mean, his channel is boosh, he's doing really 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 yeah. well. It, but it seems if you look at how well, and, and not that the whiskey, I mean, we are whiskey tubers are like this much of the world of <laughs> yeah. whiskey, right? I mean, we're so small. Most right. people don't even, don't even know we exist. I drink whiskeys. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's any sort of a reflection of what's going on, the rapid increase in the popularity of bourbon channels, mm -hmm. and they, at least this isn't, you know, science. But somewhat reflects increase in the popularity of bourbons, mm -hmm. uh, and consequently, what is the cause of that? And I don't have any hard stats on this. I'm wondering if it has to do with the increase in UK prices on Scotch. You know, bourbon's always mm -hmm. been more affordable than than Scotch, but I think it's there's been this tipping point where it's just okay. I'm going to bourbon. Yep. You know, I just, just a little bit. You know, just just it just comes to a point where people just go, you know what? I'm going bourbon. I think a lot more people are just going, nah, I, I, I'm not bourbon. paying the tariffs. I'm not paying the taxes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead over to bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and then it's become much really, really, and it's more, I think it's, it's somewhat easier. Mm -hmm. not, it's not as complicated. It's more approachable. If you're new to whiskeys, it's sweeter, right? People generally mm -hmm. like sweet, Generally, yeah. you know, like, you know, uh, and I, I just think all these little factors are sort of adding up again. This is my pure speculation, mm -hmm. my theorizing in my head. <laughs> I got uh, to do as well. Sort of contributing factors to it. Anyway. So yeah. I'm going to see if, if I blew this out of my ass sure. uh, or if I got this right, I moved the bottles around. I'm going uh, I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go to this version. Yeah. Uh, by all means. The one that's right next to what we have selected right there here. There we go. Yeah, there, we there, go. go. there we go. Yep. I'll click on the right one. Yep. All right. So after you do that, I have some conjecture of my own, but I absolutely want to see your, your results. All here. right. Drum roll. All right. Uh, the color of this. Oh, there's two stickers, blue and green. Hmm. On that one, I didn't have enough. The bottom of this is, oh, just blue. So, uh, nope, I'm off on that one. This Wine one, tasting's hard. Red. I'm looking at my camera. And red. Okay. Identified right. that one. Got that one. Right. Bottom of this one is blue. Bottom of this is blue green. Oh. So mm -hmm. this. Oh. That's interesting. Okay. So I mixed up these two. And this is green. Mm -hmm. And this is green. So the two that I mixed up. Or these two, but I got these two right. So 50-50. Oh, basically, 50-50, 50-50. Um, which now makes me go, okay, the one I like the best, well, the one I thought, I, I really, the, the one I like the best turned out actually to be the Weller out of oh. all of them. I'm, I'm surprised. So let's look at the ABV of the proof. 45, and this should be 65. Hold on, I got to go. Okay, I'm going to move these back around this way. And this way, I gotta try this again. <laughs> I'm just checking for the bite. No, I like it. Alcohol. I was gonna say it's actually it's interesting that you you picked the Weller. Uh, just kind of, I always think of myself as 
loving high proof whiskeys, but I, I bet if I did a similar, uh, similar kind of comparison, I, I bet I would end up not picking one of the highest proofs as my favorite, but mm. interesting. Okay. So, um, I think the funny thing is, I, I would still I wouldn't change my view which one I'll, I, at this particular moment at this particular time under these particular conditions I am right now really really enjoying the Weller. Mm -hmm. um, the spice difference between these two I'm not finding a huge major difference, mm -hmm. uh, and even though this is you know twenty percent more in, in 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 ABV in terms of like a burn and a bite and those kind of associations. Um, I'm not noticing something really, really, really huge, which really, really surprises me. But I'll go back to my original uh, perception of the Blantons. I thought I was a little thin. I thought it was mm -hmm. a little simple uh, and was not impressed. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, like if, uh, if so, Blantons didn't have the little horse on it, I feel like a lot of people would pass it over. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in fact, I would say out of all these, it was the one I was least impressed with. Out That's of all interesting. Of them. Even over the Buffalo Trace, huh? Out yeah. Of um, sip a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what's the ABV on your blends? Um, ninety-three proof. Okay, right. which is forty-six point five. Yeah. Anyway, so that really, really interesting. Um, so for me personally, if I was going to go out now and run out and buy another bottle of something, I'd be looking for the. I'd probably be looking for the Weller, or I'll mm -hmm. always grab another Elijah Craig. But anyway, all right. So you you said you're going to have a conjecture. What do you think? I'm, I'm just laughing that of of the one that you choose, you picked the only one that nobody can find. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've had that Weller, but I've actually never owned a bottle because it never makes it up here to Massachusetts. Now, ever. what about? So I've seen the Antique 107. That How one I've had compared to this one. Do you know? Uh, I'm. I actually. I don't. I'm not really sure. I haven't okay. had them side by side, and I, I don't know a whole lot of stats about the green bottle there. Um, okay. The 107 is 107 proof. Okay. Um, it is, in my opinion, equally as hard to find. Um, okay. I've actually never seen any, or I should I should say in the last like three years, I have not seen a Weller in person. Oh. And since you were kind of segueing into this, so here here's my conjecture on the whole bourbon thing. So... I, I'm going to liken this to one of my other hobbies, which I'm going to nerd out here for a minute. So video game collecting got really big about eight years ago and maybe even a little bit longer. And what happened was this old lady found a collection of games up in her attic and went to sell them, realized she had a, a cart in there, that uh, an NES cart that was worth 13 grand. It was the NWC, um, sorry, no, stadium events. And when that hit the internet, people started thinking, oh, my collection's worth a ton of money. Let me go you know, do all this and it gained in popularity. Now, what I'm comparing this over to is Pappy. So Pappy all of a sudden became this huge hot button issue. This is like the best bourbon ever made. You know, you could buy it for like $65, go buy all of them. So people were like, oh, well, there's a money making piece to this. Let me resell this. Resellers in general are, they tend to glom onto these hobbies and then it kind of picks up steam under its own weight of, well, the resellers are selling it and they're selling things for way higher and everybody's telling me this is a good bottle. So now I'm going to pay extra money. And it, you know, it kind of builds on itself. So in this case, I think that's a big reason why bourbon got popular is because everybody started talking about these $1,200 bourbons and people started thinking, wow, bourbon can be that good. I didn't realize that. So they, you know, and then between that and the obvious craft boom that's been happening, right. anybody and their brother can make a bourbon if you want to. Right. And all of a sudden you've got local bourbons. I've got bourbons up here in Massachusetts. And right. so then you've got that local bit along with the craft beer bit. Um, it's just, it's all kind of rolling into itself. And everybody, especially since COVID started, everybody's home. Everybody's drinking more. At least I am. Um, I think that there's a lot of factors that are going into why bourbon has taken off. But right. I think a lot of it has to do with not only its accessibility, but the the presence in the media that it has had over the last couple of years. And that's actually why when Willer... When you say media, you think yep. it, are you, people use that word generally. Are you talking about in terms of newspapers, television? I'm mostly talking written, yeah. Um, like well, blogs, about yeah. Social media. A social, okay, good, good point to make, yeah. So I think that there have been a number of... Uh, 
what's the word? Call it bloggers um, that have written stories about how this whiskey is amazing and this goes into the Weller. This is made from the same mash bill as that $1,200 whiskey and it's called Weller and you should go find a bottle. All of a sudden, everybody's buying Weller and then they're reselling Weller and now it's again picked up under its own weight. So yeah, I, I think that's part of it. And then it's gone on to the Facebook groups where all these people are selling things secondhand. And now there's the scandalous part because that's illegal and the police are catching people who are selling things on the secondary market. Facebook is banning Facebook urban groups when they find them. Like, too. What was that? And Facebook is clamping down on, on exactly, on, yeah. Well. So there's so, there's, so I think it really it's when the power of social media, which until this current crisis, a lot of distilleries were almost ignoring, particularly in Scotland. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't paying a lot of attention to social media, and all of a sudden, when they couldn't have direct access to the customers, next mm -hmm. thing you know, they're doing their own videos. They're calling up Roy. Hey, hey, <laughs> can you help us out? Can you help us out here? <laughs> Uh, and so what we're going to realize is, um, yeah, social media is huge. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I guess uh, there's a story, you know, I guess Roy was at an event and, you know, and he's interacting and people weren't aware of it. You know, the mainstream media, you know, the print media, the traditional mm -hmm. media. And then when they looked up the vault and they're like, holy cow, these people have like 50,000 people in their group. Yep. And that, you know, now they've got okay, 200 something thousand subscribers. You're like, who in the hell are these guys? Yep. You know, it, it's like they're so off the radar. They're not really, if you just Google, if you Google a whiskey, mm -hmm. in addition to websites popping up, the little video, yep. potential videos will pop up. And sometimes I might see one of yours. I might see some of my own videos. I might see Jason or something like that. But mm -hmm. these videos pop up, <coughs> which they talk uh, talk about the list because it shows up in um, a Google search. Now, mm -hmm. somehow mainstream media, and I think until recently, a lot of distilleries really weren't paying a lot of attention to uh, the influence because I mean, everybody raise your hand if you've ever bought a bottle because one of your favorite whiskey tubers, Scott and Bart, the mm -hmm. tribe, Bill, you know, but I mean, put in a yes. Did you ever buy Bart. something because someone in a whiskey tuber <laughs> channel, uh, the buddies or anybody else, the yeah. junkies or bourbon junkies, any of them, have you ever just say, everybody say yes or something like that? I put a hand up, whatever. If you ever bought something because of a whiskey tuber, yeah. I know Absolutely. I have. Absolutely. Uh, I, I bought some because of uh, Scott and Bart. I have a Lafrague over there. Triple right. cast I bought because of Bart. Uh, Killjoy says, uh, not too bad for me, thanks. Many thanks. Um, there's a hands up. Yes, yes, hell yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, say just about it. Uh, bourbon bites. Yep. Uh, Richie Z, absolutely. John Guetzo. I have people um, thanking me uh, for mm -hmm. doing the side by side comparison videos because they were making a purchasing choice. Based on my side by side comparison videos, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, um, so now if so if Ardbeg starts to crease in price, I guess you can blame me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually I almost picked up a, a wee beastie today. Um, uh, again, how much? I well, so that's I think it was fifty four. It was uh it was more expensive than what I think it's supposed to be, and and I'm basing that off of the rest of this place that I went to. It was a place called Norfolk Wine and Spirits uh, okay. in Massachusetts, and all of their prices were crazy high. Um, and I know that because my normal place has crazy high prices and they were higher than there. <laughs> so, so the I, most expensive I've seen around here is 45, but I've been yeah. seeing $34 regularly. Wow. Yeah. Now that it's, you know, now that the, that the inventory is increasing, there's more and more of it, more and more. I saw it at BevMo. I think I saw it, not BevMo. I saw it at uh, Total Wine and More for $34. Um, and so now it's, now the hype is going down. Now it's more readily available. You know, mm -hmm. now, now the price is coming down, you know, 10, 15 bucks. Um, yeah. But when it first arrived here, it was like 40, 45 bucks. And now it's coming down to, to 34. Yeah. So, I'll definitely uh, be picking up a bottle. Up a bottle. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm curious to what you think of it. Uh, yeah. And and if you have a lag of an eight, put it up against that and see what okay. you think. Yeah, I, I might actually. So I, I'm I'm uh, gonna pick a, a random whiskey tomorrow. It's it's part of my, my Patreon thing where okay. people can suggest a bunch of different whiskeys. And I'm gonna pick one at random on the live stream tomorrow night. And so I'll probably be going to the store on Tuesday. And and depending on where I go, I will almost certainly pick up a wee beastie as well, um, just because I really want one. <laughs> so, which I, you might be able to relate to this, Eric, although I feel like you're a little bit more pure when it comes to whiskey buying than, than I am. Um, and I'll explain what no, I, mean. I use credit cards. What was that? No, I use credit cards. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, um, I often make choices based around what videos I think will do well sure. and or what 
whiskeys I think will either be hilariously terrible or good, you know? Right. And, and so I, don't, I very rarely, like today I was at the store and, and even despite the, the price, I almost picked up the Anok 22 because I think it was 139, um, which I do believe is a little on the high side, but I really just love Anok. Um, I had the 18 and I just plowed through that bottle. I have like this much left that I'm saving for the review, <laughs> but I, uh, I, I rarely buy them just because it's something I want. Huh. So I kind of do both. So uh, Co N, if I'm pronouncing it, he says, "Do you have the Ardbeg 19?" Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right here, and that's 300 smack erroneous. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I might have been the first or close to it to review that one. So there's dip, there's multiple different reasons why I buy one, just because I want it. You know, Ardbeg. Yeah. You know, uh, two, uh, if it's something I want and it's really, really, really early, and it'll you know attract more viewers like the Ardbeg. Yeah, I'll buy that. I'm not gonna buy a whiskey just because you know if, if because there's hype about it. If if I'm like, nah, I'm not into that. Like yeah. some high rye thing, uh, like a rye thing. I'm yeah, I like rye, but I'm not so much into rye. I'm just gonna run out and buy one just because I think it'll get lots of views. So I'm not mm -hmm. that much into rye. Uh, but I tend to, I'm on a journey and I have things I like. I just spent, I just bought 13 bottles of Irish. Not because right. it's St. Patrick's Day. Not I know you, you do St. Patrick's Day kind of thing. Right. Um, but just because uh, when I went, so I took the class down there at the, the um, Wizard Academy, yep. and, you know, a marketing school, and you do these flights of three whisk three whiskeys multiple throughout throughout the day, and different types of comparisons. It's not a blind tasting; it's just different, different kind of comparisons. And I and I already knew Irish was a category. I just I'm kind of weak on. I don't really know that much about. And yet, it's a, historically, it's a like one of the most important regions, right? So I knew, you know what? I need to spend some time studying Irish uh, whiskeys so that I grill into my head the profile. So if I'm ever doing blind, I'll be able to recognize an Irish. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I went and done. So it's now I know pretty much figure that I'm not going to get the most views out of those, like Texas. Yep. I, I love Texas whiskeys. I have a great time in Texas. I have a, fantastic time hanging out with the texas people but it didn't get me a lot of views but no. i don't care I'm I, was, I was about to say prepare yourself for some of the whiskey you're going to enjoy a ton especially that glendola that you mentioned that you were going to get yeah. um, which yeah. one are you getting uh the 13 uh oh, Mizunara? yeah oh, I'm, you're gonna love it you're did you hear my story what happened no uh no but i heard people talking about something breaking yeah, yeah. so i have a shelf right over to my left yeah, and I had rearranged things and full up full of bottles, and I don't I don't know if it was like the the thing was slightly out of balance, so it might have tipped a little bit, and mm. then the the peg popped out. Oh no! And so they didn't all hit the floor, but a lot of them did, and one of them broke, and the one that was broke was the Glendella Thirteen Mizanera cast. No, the hundred dollar bottle. <laughs> expensive out of all of them. Yeah, of course. Well, but, but I'm thankful. I mean, it could have been worse. More could have been. And I spent like three hours cleaning it up, oh. you know, cleaning up the mess. Yeah. But anyway, I, so I have another one on the way. But there goes 125 bucks for shipping. Yeah, man, those are that's an expensive bottle too. But you're gonna love it. I, I promise you're gonna love it. What's well, um, smelled great on the floor? <laughs> I, I bet it did. I mean, this whole Actually, thing, my whole kitchen smelled like smelled like whiskey. It was a great smell. But yeah. it, I don't want the place smelling like whiskey. If I'm and if I'm doing a bourbon, I don't want to be fighting with uh, the, the aromas of Irish whiskey. Nah, they're they're not good to do side by side. The bourbon will kind of overpower an Irish for the most part. Um, by the way, so when I was listening earlier, you uh, you were talking about the Napogue, by the way. So Napogue, because it's like Pogue Mahone, which you may or may not know what that means. What did you just call me? <laughs> Pogue Mahone Your mama. is... Uh, Gay, uh, gay like I guess whatever for uh, kiss my ass. So, <laughs> so <laughs> um, and uh, Napog means something like uh, hill, hill, something to do with hill and kiss, like kiss on the hill or something like that. So you'll you'll learn about it when you're doing your research. But sure, sure. Um, just pronunciation is hard when you're reading. So I figured okay. I'd help you out on that one. So just say really fast and with confidence. That's that's that, that's what I do. Yes, if you're gonna if you're gonna mispronounce it, do it like you mean it. <laughs> well, here's what you could do to get more engagement: purposely mispronounce thing. Oh, so I you know. Put a comment that everybody correcting you. <laughs> I know. Well, I put I put out a video today on uh, the old fashioned, and the the one that I made had both cherry and an, and an orange in it. And there's there's two different types of old fashions. Probably more than two. One of them is way simpler. It's just like bourbon and simple syrup and um, 
bitters and like that's it right um right. but the one that i did had had a muddled orange and a cherry in it and pretty much the same ingredients and everybody loved to tell me how that was not an old-fashioned and then other people were correcting them and saying absolutely it is that was like the original old-fashioned that bill made so it was it was fun but yeah contention is always good for comments sure you know what the funny thing is i when you say iron orange, you oh, have I know. An Austin accent on the orange. I know it's one of my few words. I, I have been made fun of by people my whole life for that because it it's very much pr for me pronounced a r a n g. Yeah, and I, I like and I, I like it. If you watch <laughs> Social Super Club, whenever he says about, he says a boot. A boot. <laughs> yeah, he has he has a sort of you know typical uh, Canadian accent on that. So I I forget I, if I left it in the video, I, but I the I, original. I, Oh. Sorry, I have yeah. two Irish Peter. I have the Connemara, yeah, or Connemara, however you want to forget Connemara, yeah, and then I have the Donovils, uh Three Crowns, which is a blended Irish whiskey, but that one's also peated. I so have not had that one. Are, the only two Irish peated that there are that I know of, I'll be doing both of them. Yeah, I think you'll be very surprised by the Connemara if you haven't had it yet. I had a mini of it, but it was mm -hmm. like really early in my whiskey journey. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking more time, better spending time with a you know full on bottle. Yeah, uh, comparing it with some of the, you know, the scotch as well. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I forget what I was. Oh, yeah. So I remember the the original edit of the video I put out today had I, I put in like big letters, just orange, as I said. Wow. it. I, I think I might have taken it out before the final edit, but I don't remember. So uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. so um, so what are you drinking now? Which one do you think? Uh, do you have more I, than one there? I poured some of the Blanton's Gold. Um so I, I've done, I did the old Ezra seven first. I have that um, one. I really like that one. Yeah, this one's great. And and people, for whatever reason, it's become popular all of a sudden. Um, so Scott but, from uh, My Bourbon Journey and I, uh, we did we did a live stream on that one. Okay. And I think it was, I had to order it. I found it down at a sh place down in Los Angeles. And I think it was like 65, 70 bucks in that range, in that, in that neighborhood. How much I yeah. paid And I really like it. It's another hard one to find though, unfortunately. It's, it seems like that's that's a very common thing. Good stuff. Hard to find. <laughs> so um, are you only doing the Glendalough 13, Mizunara? Um, from Glendalough? Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get... So, like, the different types of Irish whiskeys, different producers, um, so that, you know, I get a triple cat. I, I get a triple distilled. I get a single malt. Mm -hmm. I get... You know, pot still. I get you know age statements, non age statement. I get I have a a, a red breast uh, lust owl, which is a yeah. sherry cast. So I got two different types of peated ones. Of you know, just like all the variations of Irish whiskeys, not just you know all the same kind of uh, type of Irish whiskeys. That's awesome. I got a yeah. little more do fifteen year old. Mm -hmm. to sort of get more of a, a range of Irish whiskeys, mm -hmm. um, and but then out of all of that, go. Okay, what is there anything that all these have in common that make them say I'm Irish and mm. distinctive from Scotch or anything else? That's kind of like the big at the end. My big takeaway will be uh, will be to do that. And the thing I start doing because I'm planning on doing the level two class and 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 continue on up is I'm gonna start making my own little blind tasting kits. Mm -hmm. So I already have a gazillion of the little bottles. Yep. So I'll take, you know, so I'll take some of those and fill up a bunch of little bottles. I'll take some scotches. I'll take some Japanese. I'll take some bourbons. And so I'll make these little kits. So like one's a Japanese, one's a bourbon, one's a Irish, one's a scotch, or one box will be like all Irish, uh, different types of Irish. One mm -hmm. might be whatever else. So I'll put together a whole bunch of kits. And then what I can do is, um, and just have them numbered. And then inside will be a card and a little envelope. And either I can do it or I guess ask my brother, hey, can grab one of the kits for me and I'll do a blind tasting mm -hmm. and just to practice uh, blind tasting more and more and more familiar. So after I've done my study of Irish whiskeys um, to then go back. So I'll be sort of duplicating for myself essentially what we were doing in class. Mm -hmm. um, and except for I'll probably do four, four drams or rather than three or I could do them in threes. Um, and so just to more and more and more familiarize myself and get better at blind tasting. Uh, whiskey is to be able to identify not necessarily the producer because that's i mean come on but if yeah. you say what's the base ingredient okay is it malted barley unmalted barley is it corn is it rye is it got some rye in there mm -hmm. so what, what, what country do you think it's from 
and what st what style is it? And if you can, and, and then if you're getting a really good, good close on the ABV, you know, or the proof, I, I think then boom, you're spot on. If you if you can name the producer, I mean, tip my hat to you. But well, I think that's, that's part of it. Like we were, you were talking about with the bourbon. Uh, so like if you only focus on a single style of whiskey, then maybe you can get to the point where you start guessing who the maker is. Right. Um, for example, like like Jason, right? So Jason's got a great palate and a great nose. And when he focuses only on bourbon, he does a fantastic job. Um, I haven't seen him do anything else. Like I'm not right. to say anything negative. I'm more saying he's, he does a fantastic job with bourbon. And, right. But if he was trying to select from the whole gamut of whiskeys, I think anybody would do a, a like have right. a hard time. You know? <laughs> Same thing with wine. So yeah, like a lot of sommeliers, yeah, you have to have you need to have a general knowledge of all wines of all regions and all laws and all that kind of stuff. But then they tend to focus on a particular favorite. Mm. <clears throat> so there's a guy named Raj Parr, uh, and he is like the man when it comes to Burgundy, uh, and he's going to blind taste Burgundy really, really, really well. So if you read his book, he has a book called Sommelier. He has like maybe four pages on Bordeaux and 20 pages on Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, we know what, and then what does he produce? He, pro he has, cause now he's a winemaker. Yeah. He produced Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, which are Burgundy wines. Okay. So it's, it's similar to, yeah, you can get, you become focused on one particular uh, genre of, of, of whiskey. And then you become an expert on that particular style and more of a generalist in, in terms of everything else. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm probably going to stick to being a generalist of trying to be a little bit of everything uh, with, with my favorites being scotch, but at least have a general good grasp of everything. I feel like if I, if I limited myself to either scotch or bourbon or, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't limit myself to Irish because there's just not enough of them. But if I limited myself to one of those two, I feel like I would get bored. Um, you know, I tend to review more bourbons, but it's mostly because they're easy to get um, right. less expensive and, you know, do better. Um, right. But Scotch, scotch is very good in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of unique flavors that you're going to pick up and stuff, but yeah. I could probably pick up almost anything and, and certainly tell you if it's a scotch and Irish or, or a bourbon um, or a rye, but there's certain, certain whiskeys out there. Like if you started incorporating American whiskeys in there, it might actually get a little tough to separate out which style. Right. If, right. If, I, if I literally was blindfolded, and I couldn't see the color. That would uh, make it a little one tough. One of the things is in, 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 getting more familiar with American single malts is they reflect a lot more of where they're from in terms of how they've interacted with the casks mm -hmm. because, you know, right now it's like 55 degrees Fahrenheit in Glasgow, Scotland, and it's yeah. raining. Uh, it's right now, it's probably 95 to hundred degrees uh, in Texas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> so uh, the, the the way in which the whiskey has grabbed onto the cask uh, is just, is very 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 noticeable. So mm -hmm. you could have a whiskey. It has this youth note in the mid palate that says I'm a young whiskey, but then it's got this really intense interaction with with the cask. Yeah, that, and and Scotch does not do that. I was gonna yeah. say I feel I feel like bourbon is way more forgiving at less age than anything else really. Oh yeah. Because you're you're dealing usually with with brand you know brand new, right? but I I meant to expand that to American as well. But right. like you're dealing with new barrels for the most part, or right. if you're doing an American, maybe not new, but you probably have some access to something decent because it's right. not it's probably made pretty close to you, you know. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> so at the end of the, I'm doing miscellaneous month, just okay weird things this month, but I'm gonna do Irish next month. I think it's gonna go two months, two months of Irish. Mm -hmm. And so my my channel subscriptions will probably start slowing down a little bit. I was gonna say, like, <laughs> brace yourself because it's not going to be. I, 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 don't know. Yeah. I but I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, but but also you can tune in to, on Facebook. There are groups that focus on particular styles of whiskeys. So you'll start. You can actually pick, start interacting with those people, and you'll you'll see them showing up. Mm -hmm. But then when you switch genres of whiskey, then you know they people go away. Care. But I, you know I don't care. After that, I'm gonna do an another. Uh, Another channel building uh, marathon of more Texas whiskeys. <laughs> okay. Then I'm going to do some, I'll do some, uh, oh, um, independent bottles of Isla. I got to get some more, but that, that's when we start heading into Christmas. And, but I got the whole year planned out in terms of what, what I'm doing. That's great. So, but the main thing is developing my, my, my palate and, and, and um, that I have a memory, a sense memory of all these different types of whiskeys. I would like to do more Japanese. You did yeah. that um, 
<laughs> Matsui. Matsui. <laughs> yeah. Matsui. Uh, Matsui. Uh, <laughs> Mizunura, Mizunura cask. <laughs> I was so sad because because that Glendalo Mizunara that that you're talking about that made me realize how delicious Mizunara can be. Right. And how how awesome of a flavor profile it can add, and all this stuff. So when I when I got I I got the bottle right. So I I don't even think you really buy it around me anyway yet. But they right. were like, hey, do you want to review this? And after researching the the company, I realized that there's probably a reason that they're reaching out versus like just counting on somebody to maybe review it because the the company itself has some. They're not well thought of. So when I started, I already bought one. This is the same one, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I already had. I already had one. Yeah, we did as well. No, we well, you can't well. blame that one on me, Eric. I was very clear in my video that that was not a good whiskey. <laughs> but I, you know, I think Daniel and Rex liked it more than you did. They had a different one. They had the oh. peated, I believe, or no, they had the sherry. They had the sherried one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So you and I have the Mizunara, um, and I haven't tried the sherry or the peated. Uh, but people told me the Mizunara was probably the worst of the three. So, okay. yeah, great. Um. But either way, well, yeah, no, I was very much earlier because maybe I would have bought something different. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I almost bought a Paul John uh, Nirvana tonight, which is apparently oh. a fairly new bottle. Um, the Scotch Test Dummies reviewed it back in April, actually, which I was surprised because like it it literally had a tag that said new arrival. I was like, oh, nice, something new. Um, and it was super cheap. It was a Paul John for $34. So Indian whiskey for $34, that's unheard of. Um but I also was like, oh, maybe it's terrible, <laughs> you know, but I, uh, to your point earlier, I was in the store, so I couldn't watch the video from Scott and Bart to find out if it was something worth picking up or not. Right. But yeah. you know, 34 bucks, I'll take a, I'll do a gamble. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've I only probably... had one major disappointment and that was glyph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I saw the enigma. It's funny. I, in my mind, I keep confusing enigma and glyph. Um, I saw the Enigma earlier today, and I, I thought of of you and a couple of others who have said that the glyph was terrible. So, yeah. Okay. So, other than that, uh, oh, um, I have the Amarut Intermediate Sherry Cask, which I picked up for fifty mm. bucks. Those are going for uh, like one twenty five and one fifty now. Yep. And I got like five or six. that was a great price. <laughs> yeah, I got like five or six. I got like six bottles of it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, so, uh. Ko N asked if that was even a Japanese made whiskey. That particular Matsui is, but it's the first one that they've made. Um, everything right. else was essentially sourced. Um, so that's their that's them putting their their foot into the into the game, I guess you want to however you yeah, say that. In the house, uh Phil and Deepa. I need to have them on my channel. I've not had them on, and they're essentially neighbors. Oh. Yeah, so Phil and Deepa whiskey. Oh, Miss whiskey, 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 yeah. whiskey mystery. Yeah, they're about 20 degrees uh cooler, 20 30 degrees cooler because they're like right next to the ocean. <laughs> oh, okay, not where I thought you were going with that. No, no, <laughs> and, and but the cost, of their cost four times as much. Yeah, yeah, so that's a so whiskey that mystery. I, I might subscribe, I'll have to double check. Yeah, hey, by the way, be, anybody who hasn't already put a thumbs up on Eric's channel, he used to be Captain 3D because he started off, to, he was doing a, a video thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then he, they migrated doing the whiskey thing. Um, I think it was actually uh, Roy that first sort of uh, discovered them, and everybody else came from him. Then they migrated and they made changes and they built their, their the way they do the tastings. And they got the, they changed the background. We've actually met up before. I've been over to the house. Super nice people. Mm -hmm. um, and they're doing something really really different that nobody else is doing. The way they're doing uh, whiskey reviews and, and they're a lot of fun. Uh, I'll really have like to go check them out. They're doing something really different than uh, you sort of standard uh, whiskey review kind of a thing. So that's good. I, f I feel like there's got to be, I, I always try to think of something new to try um, yeah. just because the, there's so many people reviewing whiskeys now. And it's, I mean, it's great if, if, and you know, there's plenty of people out there to choose your palate from who match you for the most part, but I, I want to do something different. That's more entertaining, Right. Um, but it's tough, tough to think. I'm not very creative. <laughs> <laughs> so there's been, there, but I mean, so I've been doing this since April 2000. No, is it that long? Four years. I was gonna say you've been around for a while, Eric. Four yeah. years now. But I can, I, 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 when the other day I was thinking about how many whiskey tubers there used to be that have gone that are no yeah. longer exist. Yeah. Um, so now three people I know went. They went into the business, hmm. uh, and so because of business, right? Like Jason. Yeah, like Jason. 
Um, but a lot of others, I, I, I don't, for, and they don't say goodbye and they just kind of disappear. I know, right? Yeah. That's, that's one thing I've always kind of said to myself is when I, when I'm done, there will be a, an ending video. Like right. if I disappear and there's no ending video, something happened to me. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And I've always, I've always kind of thought to myself, I should, I should pick a whiskey, um, that I'll, I'll plan to do for my last episode. Um, it's almost unfortunate I've done Johnny Walker Red because that would have been a great way to go out. <laughs> mine will be mine will be from the ER in the hospital. <laughs> and, you know, mine will just be ringing my liver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have I'll open my other bottle of Dark Cove, our big Ooh, Dark Cove. Yeah, I'll go, out, I'll go out with that one. You know. <laughs> yeah. Now, see that that might be something. Maybe I'll pick up just like a. I almost bought a, a Red Breast Twenty Seven today. Um, oh. And I actually even found it. It was a. It was at a decent price. I just wasn't prepared to drop four hundred and fifty dollars on a bottle. Um, but I was real. It was the most tempted I've been for that high of a price before. I just they had two of them. So if they had one, I might have picked it up. But since they had two, I thought to myself, I'm like, ah, if I change my mind, I can go back and get it. But so I went a little crazy. <clears throat> um, hey, the master drums coming in. All okay. right. All right, so we talked about the, the increasing prices of bourbons, the huge demand, these, these insane after, after you know at prices. The reason why you know this is going for now two hundred bucks. Now I'm going to bring on the person who's really responsible for the huge demand, increasing demand, and constant prices. We can all blame this guy. Everybody, give him a thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Jason, <laughs> mother. Bleep, 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 bleep. Give him a thumbs down. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd say give him a finger, a middle finger, but there isn't one of those on there. I don't know. Uh, there's <laughs> there's got to be an emoji for that, right? Yeah. Yes. So, how, how you doing, doing, man? It's been a while. Yeah, doing great, man. Uh, I'm glad you guys are still on. I wanted to uh, jump on. Uh, I got home a little bit later, but um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the invite. I, it was definitely a topic that piqued my interest. So, I'm glad I could jump on a little bit. Nice. So, the message question I, I didn't know. So, basically, I did a I did a blind of all these. I got 50 of them, 50 50. So uh, my least favorite of all these turned out to be the Blantons. My favorite <laughs> out of them was uh, the Weller Special Reserve. Oh, really? Um, I mixed up these two, mm -hmm. uh, but identified these two. And my least favorite of them was actually the Blantons. And my favorite turned out to be uh, the Weller. I'm, and I was really surprised I didn't identify. Elijah Craig, because it's a higher ABV. I was kind of shocked. Because that. that's a way higher ABV than the other. Yeah. So who knows? What what the hell? <laughs> yeah. So um, what is your theory? Hmm. Uh, what do you think is the reason why? Other than I mean, so there's supply and demand. Or why the sudden increase in, in in the fandom and popularity of bourbons, and consequently increasing prices? Uh. I, th I think it's I think it's multifaceted. I think you have the, um, I, I think it honestly it all started with the uh, like a lot of trend start with the hipsters. <laughs> um, I think if I've you been accused of being a hipster, what's that? I've been accused of I'm being. Sure, a you were. I remember yeah, that. when I grew a beard. I was like, what? Yeah, that was. Yeah, funny. I mean, I, I think uh, I think yeah. A while back, a while back. I mean, this is obviously going back um, when the bourbon boom and the whiskey boom, you know, kind of took off before we started seeing massive amounts of uh, craft distilleries opening up. There was a huge influx of you know new people getting turned on to bourbon again. And I think it was kind of a call to you know people wanting to go back and do something a little bit more retro, a little bit more refined, and then it kind of took off, and then. And then you had the bartender craze took over and the and mixology, which also drew more bourbon drinkers in because now they wanted to try something a little bit more of a of a bourbon cocktail. Mm -hmm. And then as that started increasing popularity and people ended up realizing how sweet bourbon was, you know, the, the, the popularity took off. And then I think once all that caught up to itself and bourbon got really popular again, you have brands like Buffalo Trace and Heaven Hill and some of the big brands, Wild Turkey, knowing what they have. And as soon as like when the word got out, that was it. And then it was just this huge, everyone needed to have bourbon. Everyone needed to try bourbon. Everyone needed to be around it, experience it. And then, and then soon after, and I'm still seeing it go up, which I think I talk about this on my show all the time. It, it's ridiculous 
how high the secondary market is is going up. It's um, pause one second. Yeah, uh, secondary market. It seems to me we think of second market as individuals buying it and then flipping it, but it seems like even like liquor stores definitely are are kind of getting it getting into the second. They're like get their hands in the secondary market. And they're doing flipping of us. Of oh, a absolutely. So I, I know a couple stores uh, in New York that when they get their allocated bottles, they don't even go on the shelf. They go straight to secondary and they make a mint on them. Mm. And listen, there's a part of you that says, you know, fuck you. Why are you doing that? You're just screwing out the consumers who really want to drink the stuff and not collect it. But on the other hand, listen, it's uh, it's capitalism, survival of the fittest. You know, you have to, if, if idiots out there, and, you know, I, I bought some stuff at idiotic prices, too. I'm probably one of them that have, yeah, we all we all have you know, maybe overspent for a coveted whiskey that we wish we, we wanted to have. And if, if there's going to be a market for people that are going to buy this stuff at these prices, then, you know, they're going to keep marketing it up like that. It's it's kind of uh, it's that's why I always say the best way to get your hands on bottles is to build relationships at stores if you can. Um, this way when stuff comes in, or at least they could alert you when stuff is coming in, uh, you know, and you can, you have a chance of getting some more allocated bottles at a decent price. If not, we're going to have to keep depending on the, the secondary. And if we keep depending on the secondary price are just going to continue to go up. It's pretty, uh, it's a pretty simple formula. I prefer to blame other whiskey tours myself. <laughs> Maybe we should just blame, blame Chad and Sarah, but they're really nice. So we should blame uh, the bourbon junkies. We'll blame those guys. <laughs> <laughs> all, their, all, all their fault. So speaking of that, so developing – one of the things I in the video I talked about my top five sources for, for buying whiskey, so it's kind of related to this, is your local whiskey shop. And I in a, in a little ticker thing going underneath, I say – you know, make friends with your with the owners. Become friends with the owners, which can be challenging to do. But I have found someone that I've really connected with, and we we become friends. And he owns a whiskey store, so he's and he so he watches my channel. Eli, if you're watching, hello. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so you know my story with the with the Bunaham and uh, Moyne and the script with Cast Cartel. I was about to say my favorite place to buy stuff is Cast Cartel. <laughs> Are you <laughs> what, No, okay. not at all. Never, never. Yeah, yeah. Hold, that, hold that thought, guys. I'm gonna grab a, a whiskey. Hold on. Hey, cool. Yeah. So, should we talk trash about uh, Jason as he walks away? You mean the mook? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, I'm gonna grab. If you tell him sweating, I'm I can hear you, fuckers. I have no idea what you're talking about, Jason. That was Eric. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a glass and some ice. I'm sweating like crazy. I'll be right back. All right. All right. So. You know, Hi, everybody. My name's Eric Waite. I like wine, and I talk about whiskey sometimes. <laughs> Look at all my whiskeys on my shelves. <laughs> Hi, Eric. <laughs> nothing, nothing happened while you're gone. It's totally fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> oh. What'd you grab there, Jason? Uh, the last bit of my well or full proof pick. I was gonna say it looked like a Weller bottle, but I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah, there. because since uh, Eric picked it, I'll whip this one out. Whip it out. Yep. So, excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so uh, Eli, this guy owns a shop nearby. He saw my video, and I got screwed over on this bottle of the Moine thing. So he, so he goes. Yeah, so you know, I called one of the guys to see if I get one. I couldn't get one, but he's, he's looking at this one. But I can get you this one. Are you interested in this one? It's a 1997 Bunahaven Palo Cantado uh, Sherry wow. Cat finish. So, and my eyeballs just went. Pfft. So, <laughs> of all the sherries, only two percent becomes Palo Cantado. That's okay. how rare that sherry is. And so, yes, I'm like you can't. You can't even. It's like there's two bottles available in California, and he just got them for me. Nice. They, were, they were not cheap. That's <laughs> so really cool. I, go, I said absolutely. I want them. He goes, well, I didn't even tell you how much. I said, oh, I know how much they go for. <laughs> <laughs> they go. They're about five hundred bucks a bottle. That's the thing. So you go, you go through some shit, and then you got a nice bottle of uh, two bottles, probably of Bunahari. Yeah. So. I I, I, I did this class down in Texas on 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 sherry and sherry cast finished whiskeys, and so yeah, I, in fact I just got uh, two Tomatin twelve Fino ca uh, cast 
Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, I have two bottles of a 12-year-old uh, Tobomori Fino cask, and then a Montiato, which are really, really hard to get. Um, Oloroso casks are, are easy to get. Pedro Jimenez, you, you can kind of get them uh, possible. Anyway, so to get these, to get them to have more, uh, Pelo Cantado, I'm like, yeah, I have a bottle. I have the bottle of, P of the PX, and it's amazing stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I'm making my own bourbon blend right here, live. <laughs> well, you always got to do that at the end of the, the yeah, sample. Yeah. 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 So I'm super excited. So uh, hopefully the Tista class again down there in Texas, and I'll bring one of those bottles with me. So last time, um, it was a Spanish whiskey uh, aged in Pelo Cantado. It's only about 125 bucks, but it's almost like near impossible to get. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, so that was a lot of fun. So what's the what's the most doing a series? Of, I'll talk about. I go a little more in depth. Talk about sherry, the grapes, the production, and all that kind of thing. Um, and then I'll be doing um, uh, the, the same. I do a fino and a montado, or also pelo cantado and a pedro Jimenez, um, and a cash whiskey. So that'll be that'll be coming up uh, down, down the pike. Yeah. So what's the What's the most you guys have paid for, let's say, it's an allocated bourbon? Mm, I've actually so bourbon? super unimpressive. I, I've only bought one allocated bourbon, and, and it shouldn't have even been. It was just right when Larceny Barrel Proof first came out. Like, I, I'm talking, I don't ever really deal with that. Um, I just wait for things to come out because I'm lame. <laughs> uh, well, the most I've ever spent, the Joe Magnus Cigar Blend. Yeah. Uh, I think I paid 150 yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's, actually, that's actually a really good price for that 150. Uh, it's, so it's going, I, going I got it. And then the Masters Keep, uh, Wild Turkey Masters Keep Oloroso, which I'm going to do a re review of that during my sherry uh, rundown. Um, I think I paid 150 for that as well. Okay. In the same ballpark. Mm -hmm. I wasn't that impressed with it. So I'm hoping that maybe it's had more times to air uh, and exposure to oxygen. And, you know, a year, year and a half later, that it'll be better. I mean, it was good. I just didn't think it was worth 150 bucks. But well, you know, I'm looking forward to getting it. And, and yeah, well, I mean, when I saw your, when I saw the title for your live stream with Blanton's, I mean, Blanton's, I think is just a whole other animal. I did, yeah. I did a video just on alternatives for Blanton's because I was pissed off on how many people <laughs> were asking for it. And like, listen, I live in a controlled state in Ohio, so you can't. You know, yeah, you can make friends with the with the store guys, and they could tell you when stuff is coming in, but they have to follow certain state laws. So it's very hard for them to put stuff aside for you or do anything like that. You really have to be at the right place at the right time. So building relationships in a state, you know, a state control, um, I think it's a little bit different. You you can make those relationships with those guys, so you can, uh, you know, you know when it's coming in, when they're putting the stuff out. And, you know, that's where you can get that information there. But every time I was in the store waiting for their stuff to come, you know, my buddy Steve, who works there, he works at the local Kroger here in the liquor store. And he's he, he gets at least, while I'm waiting there, at least eight calls. Are you guys get Blanton's? <laughs> and it's amazing to me the, you know, the, the want and the chase and the, just the, the hunger to get as many Blanton's bottles as possible. I understand the collectible horsies on top. Yep. That's it. That's it. hundred percent. I understand the, the, the unique bottle design, the handwritten label. I get it. It's, it's a marketing machine, but the juice just ain't that worth the heartache. To yeah. Me. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so, uh, uh, Phil and Deepa, I don't know if it's Phil or Deepa or both of them. He says, Elijah Craig, 18, $139, but I flipped it to friends for $139. Very good whiskey mystery. Yeah. Uh -huh. He didn't even bother to make a profit out of it. He didn't take the advantage. So one of the rules of acquisition of the Ferengis in Star Trek is treat <laughs> customers like your relatives. Exploit them. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, see, Phil and Deep are good people. They're not going to oh, do Absolutely. That. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, and Elijah Craig 18 is not worth any more than 140. It's, uh, it's a 90 proof 18 year old bourbon. Some of them are really great, but most of them fall flat after about two or three sips. Right. Wow, that's disappointing. But I've done that. I've kind of done the same thing. You know, if I come across something, someone else is looking for something. Um, like the uh, Ardbeg Drum. You mm. know, I, I was able to acquire a bunch of those. Uh, Mark over at uh, the Scotch Ford Dummies has, has shipped me bottles that they could get there that I couldn't get here. 
Yeah. Uh, I brought stuff back from Texas for people. Who yeah, I mean, there. that's really the other great way to get bottles. You have friends in different states that see different things. Luckily, I have family that lives in a bunch of different states. So I get, I, I tell them, hey, this is my list this month. Keep an eye out. And they send me bottles. I got my, I got my, uh, my Italian network of family out there working. So watch out. <laughs> so, but if, but I, I was trying real hard not to make a comment when you said family. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> family, family. <laughs> yeah, it is. Fell um, off the back of a <laughs> Yeah, it's it hard to find whiskeys. So I wouldn't put if if I put in there friends who know how to get bottles. If I put that in my one of my sources, guess what would happen. Everybody would be Eric. Can you give me this? Eric, right, right, right. Of course, yeah. So I do not want to put that in the video. No, yep. <laughs> that's right. The family's on it. Whiskey Mafia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but I've had people do that. Hey, Eric, can you give me this? Can you give me that? Give me this. I'm like, I ain't got time, and it's not. It's not really, really, really legal. And I even I'll become a Patreon if you get me two bottles of. Uh, it was the uh, um, Joseph Magnus at your price at the price that you can get them at, and I'm like, yeah. No, 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 no. I, that's uh, no, that's not yeah. Because because I have to go get you the bottles, and yeah, you're gonna reimburse me, but I'm gonna ship them, and then you're by the time your dollar a month is gonna help me out, you know. Right. <laughs> you. And I don't, and I don't. No offense to the person, I'm glad he subscribed, I'm glad he glad he watches, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it's not somebody I know. It's different if I'm doing this for hey, I'm go going for Scotland, so I'm gonna pick up something for Roy or Scott and Bard or or one of you guys, you know. That'd be very, very different. Much than, different. You know, yeah. no, I don't know. Yeah, I get, you know, I get requests all the time for people to help me find bottles, and you know, if I if I know them or if I you know have a history with them, then yeah, maybe I'll do it. But it really depends. It's all dependent on the situation. Uh, yeah. If I have extras of stuff, I'm glad to help you. If you've never had it before, I really feel like a lot of the, you know, when I first started in the in the bourbon game and doing the channel and everything almost two years ago, you know, I was buying every bottle I, I saw and also buying doubles. And, you know, you hit a point and you realize, I can't drink all this by myself. There's no way. So, you know, you just, I'm having issues with shelf space. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I hear you. So you, you try to, um, you know, you, you kind of help people if they have, hey, I have a double of that. If you're looking for it, then fine. I never, I've never overcharged for a bottle of anything. I give it to them for retail if they really want it. And that's how it should be. But you know, people look at the secondary and selling bottles. It's it's a commodity now. Like people, you know, I would actually rather swap. If somebody has something that I can't get, I'd yeah, swap. Yeah, I I agree. I I do like the swap. Yeah, I've had since uh, Ohio seems to be the Weller country, and people are always looking for Weller antique. I could get by, I could swap two bottles for something else. It's just I've done that probably more often than not for anything. <laughs> so right now. If someone were to come and say to you, "Hey, what's a what's like a really really high quality price ratio bourbon that should be fairly reasonable to get a hands of?" What would be the first thing? Oh, I start with Bill. What would be the maybe the first thing that might pop in your head? Well, my immediate answer is probably going to be Buffalo Trace, um, just the regular Buffalo Trace. But that's without thinking about it at all. I could probably come up with a better better answer than that. But yep. that one, I mean, just for the price range, if you're paying twenty four dollars for that, it's still going to be good all the time. Um, also, Larceny, I think, just regular Larceny, I, I like as well quite a bit. So my brother, my brother moved in with me in June. Oh, I got a three bedroom house here. Um, and so I'm just sort of into, we've been, we traveled all over California visiting wineries and stuff, but I, I'm just now sort of getting introduced him into whiskeys and they really liked the Buffalo Trace. He really liked that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Jason? Um, there are a lot of great value bourbons. And I think that's what bothers me so much about the people that chase anything from Buffalo Trace. Um, Cause there's so many great quality value, high value bourbons on the market. But the two that jump out to me that are super high value are Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Um, and also um, uh, Knob Creek, uh, Knob Creek single barrel, and mm -hmm. you can kind of throw in the Knob Creek single barrel store picks in there. Okay. Uh, and I would also the the top three. I would probably also put um, uh, Russell's Reserve single barrel in there as well because I the, should get a bottle of the Russell's Reserve. I've had it at a at a bourbon restaurant. It was a barbecue and bourbon place, and I, I tasted it there and I liked it. Yeah, I mean these are all. These are all well-aged bourbons, non-chill filtered, um, ton of flavor, barrel-proof or close to barrel-proof. You can mess around with the proof if you need. 
And I would choose them over a Blanton's or most stuff from Buffalo Trace any day of the week. Right, mm. right. The only thing with the Ledger Creek Barrel Proof is it appear it it shows up, disappears, shows up, disappears. Yeah. Yeah. They seem to be more consistently good than Booker's ever was. Right. As far and, as and that's the thing. With the Logic Creek Barrel Proof, if you can't find it, then I always gear towards people, you know, then buy an old Forester 1920. Mm-hmm. 115 proof, it's a little lower, it won't kill you, and it's a delicious, full flavored, full body bourbon that's not gonna, you know, for 60 bucks, you know, you're not, you know, paying crazy amounts of money for, you know, a $200 bottle of Blanton's that has way less flavor than any of those bottles I mentioned. Plus, okay. I mean, I've even picked Wild Turkey 101 over Blanton's and Blinds. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's a $23 bottle that's available everywhere. So, yeah, Wild Turkey 101, I wish I would have said that when I was originally. That's like, like that one. That one has been my answer more than a few times with this exact question. It just escaped me this time. So yeah. I have a question for you, Jason. So yeah. the, earlier today, I was at a store and I was staring down probably like seven or eight different old foresters, um, none of which appeared rare. I think they're probably all somewhat core range stuff. Yeah. Are there any to avoid in your mind? Statesman. Okay. You don't want to buy old forester statesman. They rush that product out because of a movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yes. I know a couple guys that really like that stuff, but you know, most, that one that one came up on the wheel the other day, and I didn't like it very yeah. much. Most yeah. people that's try statesman, it's not really a great representation of what Old Forester does. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for me, it's always oh, so stuff to avoid. Uh, yeah, because yeah. well, it's easy to be like oh, which one? Because then it's going to be like one or two answers. This, yeah, the one to avoid. Statesman for sure. The eighty-six proof. I mean, that's a good intro, but mm-hmm. you know, most of the stuff. Yeah, anything really besides a step. I can't really think of a bad, you know, old Forester product like off the top of my head. I mean, the one that I that I do think that's probably not too worth it is the so there's the old Forester Whiskey Row series. Okay. Uh, and the first one in that lineup is called the original batch. Uh, I forgot what the year is. I think it's like 1893 or something like that. Um, it was the first one that they did, and it's a little bit on the. It's, it's close to about forty bucks. And I just think there's better stuff for 40 bucks in the mm-hmm. price range. Um, but once you hit like 1910, 1920, even the bottled and bond um, in that series, the problem with the bottle and bond from Old Forester is the price because there are a lot of good budget bottle and bonds that are cheaper, uh, that, you know, really good flavor. The Old Forester one is very good, but I think when you compare it to other bottled and bond bourbons on the shelf, it's hard to – it's it, you know it's hard to make that judgment on a on a call for you know to buy that so okay the only bourbon I've really had a disappointment with and I hate this because it's from my home state is is one from Sonoma yeah and it's basically it's like wood shavings like you just ran a uh, a plane over over wood and, shh, and you <laughs> that pencil shaving kind of a thing going on there uh, and I feel, I'm thinking about playing around with some see if I can add some sherry to it and kind of mask it a little bit just play around with it yeah but that's probably the only one i know only major disappointment i've had in a bourbon oh yeah Brent Bailey, i agree hudson baby bourbon is awful yeah i've heard that a lot i i feel like i've had that at one point but i it, the problem with tastings is i i tend to go to tastings the way i do my live streams and i just drink way too much <laughs> so, <laughs> and i and i have them fast too i mean when i do the wheel i'll do like six to ten whiskeys depending on the night and i'm the same way at, at a, a tasting except i'm usually there for a few hours and i'm having two or three at every table and the the ones i go to usually are like 40 to, to 90 tables actually um, i want to ask you bill because you know, the last live stream, I wanted to bring this up, but, you know, there was a ton of people on it. Yeah. Um, how, what's your feelings on Booker's presently today? Um, I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what you can get it for, uh, you know, by you. Um, but, I mean, here and a lot of other places, it's gone up to about $85, $90. Uh, it's, it's still in between six and seven years old. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what, what's kind of your feelings? I mean, there's a lot of inconsistencies between the batches. I just want to know if it's still one of your favorites, or are you a little bit more, a little bit more hesitant to pull the trigger on every single one you see now? Yeah, I can actually be pretty, pretty cut and dry with this one. So uh, thanks for asking. But so with the Bookers, I stopped buying Bookers after 2019 mm-hmm. um, 2019 was a particularly bad batch, but that there was, had been that was, that was Teresa's batch, right? No, that um, no Teresa's batch. 
Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I, have, I only have one burger. It's kitchen. It was a kitchen table. That's a good batch. That's yeah, a good, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a good batch. That was one of my favorites that year. Yeah, that one was all right. Hey, we got a Jamoke in the room. Uh, whiskey, Daniel, the whiskey throttle. How you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. What's up, Jabroni? Yeah, you Jabroni. You were right. I totally didn't have to go. I, apparently, that was Teresa's batch. It's been so long. Yeah. <laughs> I just forgot. Anyway, so Teresa's batch, not good. Um, apparently, the next one, whatever, 2019-02, and then I think 2019-04, were both good, if I'm remembering correctly. But I didn't have any bookers since this guy. I haven't bought anything. Um, okay. I can't, I became so disillusioned with bookers, not just because this the flavor of this was unfortunate, but that has happened before. But when they mixed this with the price increase and the less variation per year this i believe the 2019 was when they went down to 2018 was when they went down to four offerings a year instead of six mm -hmm. so they were still new to that it, it just everything seemed to be downtrending for them and then i just got disappointed when they upped the price so around me it's gonna easily cost 80 dollars to get a bottle um and that's just not worth it there's so many other things to buy um i mean Elijah Craig barrel proof all day long, right? Like I'll buy that five times over instead of a Booker's at this point. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I just stopped reviewing them. Part of it too is for a long time. Um, I mean, I've been doing this forever. I was the first one to be reviewing every new bo Booker's batch just because it seemed to work out that way. And that was a point of pride for me. Then people like Chad and Sarah came on and, and they are right there and they always got it first. And so I was just like, you know what? They're already doing it. I don't really want to spend the money on this. I'll just let them do it. Um, so that was, that was part of it, too. Quick uh, thanks for the super chat uh, to – I guess i got to scroll down. I scroll, to Will Henderson. Every time a Glen Cairn rings, an alcoholic gets its wings. Oh, man. We're going to be flying soon, then. <laughs> Flies into the side of a building. Well, you had – yeah, so after Teresa's batch, you had shiny barrel batch, which yeah. got – things back on track i think for bookers you just had more of the the good peanut and the fruit characteristic and then country ham was an absolute beast of a bottle easily the best batch they produced since um i think uh, sip a while mm -hmm. and then even the last batch last year which was uh beaten biscuits was actually right. pretty good um but i feel like at that price point with the, the price hike every batch needs to be like um, country, so, it has to, it all has to be, it's all got to be that good yeah. to warrant that price point and to warrant people buying it. And unfortunately, plus remember, it's only between six and seven years old, right. it's usually six years and eight months and four days or whatever they put on the label. Mm -hmm. And then you have stuff that I mentioned earlier, like oh, Elijah Craig Bow Proof, which is $60 and it's 12 years old and it's non chill filtered and all that good stuff. It's, it's a hard comparison to make. For sure. I'm gonna say hello to Wheels. Thank you much for uh, tuning in. So let me one one thing that was on my mind because I'm more of a Scotch mindset. Do you think that the increase in bourbon and so forth is Americans going more domestic in their whiskey consumption versus Scotch and, I, and obviously Irish? You think that had anything to play in there? No, uh, I think I think bourbon is just the hot thing. And I also think that people can get bourbons that are pretty decent for cheaper prices than getting into scotch. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, right. Because yeah. Well, and that's sort of going more domestic because of yeah. tariffs and, and, and then, and with like, forget auction houses. I was looking at something at auction and it was like 200 bucks and I almost pushed the button and I go, wait a minute, that's going to double in cost with taxes and tariff. Nope. Yeah. Not buying it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I which then, then I mean I don't know how much I'm almost like switching from scotch to bourbon for some people might be like going from you know opera to country music. You know, it's people don't necessarily jump genres of, of whiskeys like that. They tend to have a palate preference, and if you're really into scotch, and I, I'm very eclectic in all my whiskey and music, but if you're really really into the the profile of bourbon, you're not necessarily going to jump ship. 100% and jump to scotch or vice versa as well. So yeah. something, something I think about that, Eric, is is I this is something I've kind of gleaned from the um, the comments on a lot of my my kind of cheaper bourbon whiskey reviews or whatever, is people go out and they buy what their dad was drinking, and for a lot of them, that's bourbon. Um, 
And that's like, if they're trying to get into it and they're just like, hey, for example, I did a, a video called like whiskey basics. Right. And that, that gets found, you know, things like that. in the, the beginner bourbon buying guy, that one gets found a lot. And both of those, the comments are, Hey, my dad used to drink this or, you know, like, Oh, I bought this because, you know, like I, I never knew that bourbon could be this way. Cause all that they had was Jack Daniels, you know, things like yeah. that. So I think it's, yeah. I think it's more like people getting into it, start with one of the cheapest things that they can find. Cause who's going to go randomly drop a hundred dollars on a bottle of scotch. If you don't even know that you like yeah. and, alcohol. Right. And remember, I think a big part of the bourbon boom that people miss is, you know, just something that, that, you know, like I said, the hipsters and new people coming into bourbon are in these days are into these days. And that is, the experience and the story behind it. That's why you see a lot of, there's a nostalgia to it that I think people grasp onto. And then, and then once they find out how much stuff is out there and how much stuff there is to drink and, you know, everyone just wants to, you know, the cool new thing. And I think that's a huge part of it too. That's why when some new bottles come out from craft distilleries, a lot of, you know, some of these stories are contrived. Right. You know, for marketing purposes. And that's that's unfortunate. It's it's, uh, it's called poofery. Yeah. Poofery. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I um just bullshit. <laughs> so in Bourbon Justice Bourbon Justice by Haas. What's his first name? Brian? Hmm? Was it Brian ha Haas? What was the author's name? Yeah, Bourbon Justice. Yeah, Brian, yeah. Brian yeah, uh, Hara. Brian Hara. Poofery. Yeah. But um so yeah. I on, on the when I flew over to Texas recently, I watched that documentary. Um, I can't remember, on bourbon, and I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about, but I can't think of the name either. Uh, is it neat, neat. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was kind of pissed because they, they weren't serving any alcohol on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta bring your own mini bottle there. A can of water, can a can of water with a straw, or uh, you have to wear a mask all the time, and a bag of pretzels. And I was like, you know what? I'm watching this neat, you know, this documentary, and it, you, it's like you feel like you want to go drink some bourbon watching it because it's so cool. That's why you always got to fly Southwest while Turkey 101, baby, all day. No, 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 no. no. In, in the COVID crap, they're not serving alcohol. Oh, yeah, they're not serving anything. Yeah, I was with Southwest. Yeah, they're, they, yeah, I flew with Southwest. And they're just doing canned water. I guess you don't get COVID from a can and a straw, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this, though. The more I learn about scotch, and I have over the last couple of years, you know, just getting – you know, more into it, you know, watching some of you guys, you know, you know, talk about certain bottles. I have realized that there, you know, when compared to other things in the market, if you got the education, there are really good scotches that are affordable, that don't break the bank, that are super high quality. Maybe they're not as cheap as like a, you know, $18 bottled and bond bourbon, but you don't have to break the bank to get a good scotch for like 50 bucks. Yeah, so. for sure. I could rattle off like a dozen of them off the top of my head. Right, and right, you're because right. you're totally right. I think and I think that the tariffs have kind of accentuated that a little bit, too, is that that people are realizing that some of the higher price scotches have now outpriced themselves. Right. And then they're looking for the cheaper versions of them. Um, yeah, so yeah. things like Glen Murray seem like they've been doing a lot better lately. Um, and they're very inexpensive scotch. Um, you know, like I said, there's, there's a few more I can go into, but I think you're totally right. There's, there's lots of them out there and you don't have to spend a ton to get into scotch. Yeah. So I had a tasting last night, uh, in my place, um, three people came and we kind of tasted through some stuff and they, so, and all three of them, all three of them thought that all scotches taste like Ardbeg. <laughs> they're, all, they're all smoky. They're just all medicinal and they don't want anything to do with any other scotch because that's the. You know, that's kind of, you know, the predisposition that they've been exposed to now. Right, right. Um, and I'm like, no, it's that's not the case. And maybe there was a part of me that thought that, too, because I think that was the first scotch that was ever slid to me on the bar. It was like, hey, try this. I was like, what yeah. the hell is that? So, um, and once I introduced them to a couple different things, they were like, holy crap, like I could drink this. And, you know, a whole world opens up. And, yeah. you, know, you know, you could use the argument scotch is definitely more vast than um than bourbon when it comes to flavor profiles you know yeah. obviously, i'll definitely admit that um but i think you know the more bourbons you try there are profiles within each distillery like i can i feel like i'm good enough where i could tell a beam from a heaven hill from a from a buffalo trace you know mm -hmm. from a four roses there yeah. are differentiators there but you know you kind of have to just figure out what you like but there's a lot of there's definitely no shortage of whiskey that's for sure 
right, right. I right. wouldn't even say that you should think that. Like you've proven that on more than a few occasions, Jason, <laughs> that you can tell the difference between the different distilleries. Actually, Eric and I were talking about that before you came on. Um, that you're like it's impressive watching you do your thing. So, so, so my analogy was, you know, so sommeliers, you need to have a breadth of knowledge, understanding of the world of wine, yeah, and classifications, the grapes, and so on and so forth. But most tend to find a favorite, and that becomes their, you know, the one that a lot of guys are really, really into Riesling. Uh, There's a guy Raj Parra mentioned earlier. He's, you know, he's really into um, uh, Burgundy. You give him a Burgundy, and he's going to tell you the vintage. He knows the produ- he's gonna tell you the producer what uh, sub ABA or AOC within Bergen. I mean, he really and yeah. So in his book on being a Somali, he has like two pages or four pages on on Bordeaux and like 20, 30 pages on Burgundy because that's his thing. Yeah, he's a winemaker and he produces you know Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, Burgundian varietals. So you can kind of think, okay, this, yeah, I got to know a little bit about everything. Mm-hmm. Here is my jam. I'm really into this particular subcategory of wine or or whiskeys. Yeah. And, to become a, a specialist in that particular uh, category. Wine, wine sommeliers to me are fascinating. The training they go through, how they can distinguish different grapes from different regions, from different countries. It's that's yeah. insane. That's that's you know becoming a wine sommelier. That's pretty insane work. So one of the things I'm I'm trying to do, and and I feel like I'm the least qualified to do it because they're advanced sommeliers. They're a master sommeliers. I would like, hey, bring your skill set over to the whiskey world. And help, <laughs> and, and help you know uh, develop um, a, a profile and approach and a system to analyzing whiskeys the way in which some psalms do wine. But they're that far into the wine world, they're not going to convert over. So, mm-hmm. so I'm working on and in my own head and for, and for myself, and then trying to pass on. And, and I mentioned at the beginning of this, I'm, I'm kind of working on understanding structures of of whiskeys and how you analyze the structure of a whiskey and how different that is and the approach to uh, 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 analyzing uh, wines and so forth. Um, but, um, and I'm kind of like, but I'm, I can't find any, right. I'm Googling for it, reading for books. Nobody's talking about this, but I think there's a lot of exploration to do and then how to understand um, uh, whiskeys in this fashion. And it's sort of like, if it take this ticket to music, imagine a you know a jazz drummer going over to rock, or a rock drummer taking time out and go, I'm gonna go study jazz. Yeah, bring it back into rock and see how that influences the way I now drum in in, in rock music. Mm-hmm. It's something similar to that, to where you can you can learn and glean from that and then carry that over. Or or, or if you've ever heard Ingve Malmsteen, you know way he brought classical guitar over into you know the rock and roll world. You can hear. Mozart and Vivaldi and all these classical artists in the way in his approach to uh, playing the guitar. I mean, yeah, it's interesting you you brought that up too because you have, you know, me being a drummer, I've loved drummers that, you know, you have very specific drummers that have adapted to different styles, trying to change up their way of drumming, um, being influenced by different types of music. And, you know, when you correlate that to, you know, whiskey, especially on the bourbon side, we were talking about all the different uh, regions you have for scotch. You know, with with what we have, uh, what, there are over eight thousand now um, craft distilleries in the United States. Yeah, bringing out good. craft whiskey now. Terroir, soil, grain have all played a part now into um, you know what's going on. So for right. me, for me as someone who likes to drink blind whiskeys, I'm starting to pick up now the different you know whiskeys that have a specific flavor profile from out west. Eric, I mean, you've done a multitude of Texas whiskeys and bourbons, and there's a certain uh, profile there. So I think, you know, when you're kind of trying to equate that to wine or scotch, I think bourbon and whiskey and craft whiskey and what they're doing, you know, to, with certain aspects of it, you know, there's there's a definite correlation there when you talk about flavor profiles across the spectrum. It's, it's, I think it's, it's interesting. I mean, for, for my own exploration and thinking, it's, I mean, this is what I think about all the time. You know, I, I'm driving down the road. I'm at the grocery store. I'm wash, washing dishes, or I'm, I'm on the loo. You know, I'm thinking about how do you, how do we bring this over? How does this correlate? How it correlate to this? And so I hear, you know, John Glazer and his whole bl- blending. He has a wine background, and the name slips my mind. Someone to remember. He was over at Brucolati, and now he's over at Waterford uh, in Ireland. But he had a wine background, and their approach to uh, approaching um, uh, dealing with malt in Ireland is the way in which uh, uh, 
winemakers where they do vineyards. Uh, and it's insane expensive in the way in which they're, they're doing it. Um, but I think it's just gonna be really interesting to see how, and then and now you think of like the licorice uh, family. I was just about to bring that up. I mean, they're making whiskey in the style of Armagnac. Right, but they're thinking in terms of how you use corns, mm -hmm. reminds me of how you use grapes to produce, you know, a Bordeaux style blend, Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot, Petit Bordeaux. They're, yeah. doing, they're doing that with corn. Yeah, different varietals. And, you know, I do think there's a specific flavor profile that comes out of Colorado, out of Washington, out of California, Texas, even New York. You know, me being from New York, I wish they made better whiskey over there. There's not a lot of, you know, Hudson. I mean, Widow Jane is there. A lot of their stuff is sourced, though. Um, I think Kings County Distillery is actually one of the distilleries doing great stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a very small handful of, of stuff coming out of New York. They're doing they're they're growing rye in New York and using that as a base for some rye whiskeys. But that rye that they're growing in New York, they call it Empire Rye, is literally coming across like paint thinner, other than the rye we know and love. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 it really doesn't, you know, get me too excited. But yeah, so um, Eric's not a big rye guy. Yeah. I, I'm with you though, Jason. I, I, I like rye a little bit. I'm just not like really into rye. I did. I like it on occasion. I I love um a Milam Green's rye. I really, I like the Redemption High Rye Bourbon. I really like that one. So <clears throat> speaking of like, um, I haven't had anything when you might might be Northwestern uh, American whiskeys or bourbons. Um, so I, that's probably another territory that they're doing something distinct up there in Washington, Oregon, um, mm -hmm. and explore those and see how those are different than Kentucky or, yeah, or you should, yeah, you should get your hands on, on, yeah, get your hands on something from Woodenville. Um, they're doing great stuff out in Washington, even the, even the single malts that they're producing, uh, Wanderback is a great one. Um, yeah, there's some, there's some really good whiskey uh, being created out there. All right, so we've been at this for about two hours, and uh, so I want to wrap this up, and it's time for dinner, actually. Uh, Jason, I want to thank you very much for popping in. Bill, as always, thank you much for popping in. Unfortunately, we won't be seeing each other at the Bastards Ball this year, which is a, a major bummer. Yeah. Uh, we'll meet up there, but we will definitely meet up again, hopefully, Lord willing, uh, next year. Uh, anything you guys want to let uh, everybody know about what you got coming up on your channels? Bill? You can go. Oh, okay, sure. Um, so uh, I'll actually be streaming the next two nights. Um, so tomorrow night, I'm going to be streaming on my channel, uh, 9 p.m. Um, I have an idea. It's actually Whiskey Throttle. It's what I just wrote down on that post-it note um, uh, for a, an interesting. I, actually, Eric, you're inspiring this. I'm, I'm going to try to do scotches from all the different regions of Scotland and see if I can do a blind tasting and see if I can okay. identify where they're from. By the way, I had yeah. the worst hangover on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Did I did I say something weird? No, or? I was on your channel. I wasn't playing. Oh, oh yeah, 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 totally. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, I was sure. planning on coming on, and then I was on there, and then I was with the Whiskey Crusaders, and the next morning, man, I felt like shit. The next oh day. yeah, no, I had a rough Tuesday as well. <laughs> That's right. I don't do Mondays. Anyway, so uh, today's such a non sequitur. I, I was just like, what did I say wrong? <laughs> <laughs> not over drink it. All right. So uh, anyway, so my live stream tomorrow night, 9 p.m. And then I'm going to be on Malton Montreal's channel on Tuesday. Uh, okay. It's been a really long time since I've been on his channel, but I'm looking forward to that. Apparently, he doesn't really do whiskey stuff anymore. He talks okay. about topics of okay. current events or something. I don't know. He told me it'll be fun and hasn't told me any way anything about it. So okay. I'm just like, all right, sure. <laughs> but I do blame you for the hangover because I told you I don't do Mondays. You definitely should blame me for that. Yes. <laughs> All right, what you got going on, Jason? Uh, well, next week I'll be in New York visiting my mother and my grandmother. So um, I do have enough content next week, so look out for that. But not – so this Wednesday I won't be live streaming because um, I'm going to be in New York. But the following Wednesday is actually going to be my two-year anniversary show. They actually, that exact Wednesday is, is the actual first date that I put out my uh, – July 29th was the date that I put out my first – terrible video that I ever did. <laughs> so um, yeah, so everybody come hang out for that. I'm actually planning on inviting you guys on, whoever wants to come on. Okay, cool. My, my plan is to try to craft a, a blind tasting that we can all do together to see what the results are between all the whiskey tubers. Cool. That sounds fun. Yeah, yeah. let me know. I'm in. Yeah, so coordinating uh, the different types of uh, what, what – I'm going to try to just keep it to about four whiskeys, maybe four bourbons, and see – what comes out for each one of us. Cause I think it'll be interesting to see the results. So. Sure. 
All right, so I, I hope everybody has a really, really good week. Uh, if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. And again, if you want to get one of my coins, I now have them available, $20. Uh, go to the community section of my channel, and I'll tell you, you can just 20 bucks to Wait at yahoo.com and to PayPal. And that covers the postage and covers the coins. I'm really not making uh, ow, uh, any uh, money off of those. So uh, anyhow, again, guys, uh, thank you very much. And let me see if I if I can do this outward tune here. Uh, there we are. Eric has really cool coins. I have your gold one as well. It's heavy. Yeah, your coin can kill a man. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, these ones are larger. These will, yeah, these will actually cover oh, the <laughs> larger than Karen's. Oh, great. So now we have metal Frisbees. Yeah, and nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, again, thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in, and, and uh, cheers.